Well, everybody, we're back at the Dyna shop. So today we got this GTL, uh, just a few little mods on it, exhaust, headers, intake, just uh, real clean. The car's like low mileage, 29,000 mile car. So real clean GTO here. We're just gonna do a nice stock tune on it. So I got the computer already set up, ready to go. Gonna unlock everything, go take it for a drive, look at the you know idle part throttle on the scanner, and then go from there. So just got done with the first drive and everything's within like three to four percent one little spot at five so pretty much idle and part throttle everything looks really good there's no check engine light all that stuff so i think we're going to be about ready to throw it on the dyno since this car's real lightly modded just exhaust and intake most cars come in where they're like right there where pretty much they fit uh going off the tuning school stuff is within five percent on the long-term fuel trims as long as that's not outside of that like if you're seeing eight ten twelve then you'd need to go in and adjust that part throttle and idle uh everything's pretty much five or less for the most part less only one spot at five so it looks pretty good uh you start getting to diminishing returns where if you sit there and adjust it's still gonna adjust back and forth because that's what o2 sensors are meant to do uh is to you know check it and then pull some fuel, add some fuel, and kind of check itself. So uh, two, three percent's pretty much perfect. You really can't get much better than that, especially with air changes, uh, weather changes, all that type of stuff. So I think we're gonna be good. We're gonna go ahead and get it inside, get it put on the dyno. All right, so got it pulled in here. Gonna get the hubs mounted up on it. And then you always gotta remember, which I already checked the glove box, because a lot of people's wheels need a certain key, and you definitely need that to be able to get it mounted up on the hubs. Get my hubs out of here. Uh, this'll be the five lug, so to use these here. And then, you guys remember, I got the uh, six lug deals for the trucks, but otherwise you gotta have a matching hub set for whatever car you're doing. So get this thing set up on here real quick. And we can start making some pulls. Got the GTO all mounted up on here. Should be good to go. Got my controller ran to the inside of the car. Dyno is turned on. We'll get all the info from the car put into the Dyno software, and then we'll start making some pulls. We'll make uh, one pull to get a good baseline on this thing, and then go through all of the software, change all the torque management, and start working on air fuel, and I'll have to get my uh, O2 sensor as well hooked onto the car. So then I can feed the HP tuners cable, the information for the wideband and all that stuff. So I'll get that ran up in here as well and we'll get going. So after a few times of trying it, uh, these cars are very difficult with the 4L 60-65Es. They'll uh, want to unlock the converter or downshift, so you got to go and play the scheduling and all that stuff right on there. Get up to about 70 and then go, and then it helps keep the converter locked and the car runs happy and everything's good. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and make a full baseline pull right here and we'll see how it does. So I went through my tuning tree from the tuning school, got the base tune set up. We went ahead, went ahead and pulled all the torque management out of it, set some base timing on this thing. I kind of referenced the first pulls at 23 degrees. It didn't knock, so we're going to start there, uh, see if it knocks now, adjust some of the air fuel, uh, just the commanded air fuel, and then we'll see what it does, and then we'll be adjusting air fuel, I'm sure, probably up top to make it right, uh, and then play with timing, see how much power this thing can make. So the first time it went lean, we added 10% to make it match, and now it went rich. 
So it wanted me to add 10% fuel, and now based on the scanner, it's wanting me to pull five to 7% fuel. So uh, sometimes it overshoots. We'll go ahead and hit it again and make those changes, and then we'll uh, make another pull. So after that pull, we added 10%. Now we're pulling. Need to pull four back out of it. Uh, it's pretty, pretty rich, 12 volt. So hopefully we can get some more power as we lean it out. Hopefully to like that. Uh, it is at 23 degrees of timing, which is where it's kind of at factory. Uh, we'll add some more because there is no knock. So we'll see if it wants some more timing. Hopefully, and then we'll go. Hopefully it'll start picking up some power. Six four zero three. Stick up a little bit. I mean, these things are pretty efficient. Apparently, I mean, with the intake and exhaust, it's pretty happy. It's not knocking. It's not. I don't know. I thought it would pick up more, maybe from the tune, which we're still working on. It still didn't knock or anything. Uh, we'll check air fuel, see where we're at there, and keep going. See now on the air fuel, it's within half a percent to a percent. That's really really good. Seven. All right, everyone. So we're gonna work on getting this thing unhooked. So squeezed like almost 11 horsepower out of it, and around almost 15 pound-feet of torque. I mean, this car is real efficient. It came in. The air fuel was really close. It has good timing in it. It wasn't knocking at all. Uh, I was able to add a little bit of timing and just play with the fueling just a little bit, and we were able to get that out of it. So uh, not a lot. I mean, that's kind of one of those things when. Just intake and full exhaust. The cars are pretty close. You get some from bolting it on, but I think at the end of it, what were we at? 390 and 407 pound-feet of torque. So uh, not too bad out of a car that from the factory is rated at 400, I think 400. And then, you know, with those couple things, it's, it's pretty close to actually at the wheels what it makes at the crank from the factory with those couple things. So, so although that might not seem like a lot, you can't also be focused on the peak numbers. Yes, it picked up some, but not a huge amount, uh, but not bad for what it is. But also I adjusted torque management and all of those things. So the response and drivability on this car should be quite a bit better. We're gonna go ahead and get it unloaded. We'll go take it for a quick drive, make sure all that looks good, and then we'll send it on its way. But usually when you get rid of torque management, it feels like you picked up a bunch of power even though you didn't. It's just you're not allowing the ECU to pull all the power out like on shifts and stuff like that. Uh, we just helped maximize what he had going on. We're going to go ahead and get this thing unhooked and get it out of here. <laughs> <laughs> 